Today we're going to be looking at this Zadak SSD. It's not any old SSD, it's a PCI Express Gen 4x4 SSD, which means it can go up to 7,400 megabytes per second. On the front of the box, it tells you the manufacturer's name, Zadak, it tells you the size of the drive. We've got the two terabyte version, other versions are available. It tells you the model number, it's got a TWSG4S, and it's a PCIe Gen 4x4 M.2 SSD. Bit of a mouthful, but there you go, and you can clearly see that it comes with two different heat sinks. The back of the box is multilingual, gives you a few basic specifications on there. It does also tell you that the read speed is up to 7,400 megabytes per second and the write speed is 7,000 megabytes per second. So inside the box, you've got the plastic casing, you've got a large heat sink as well as its back plate, you've got a thin heat sink, the SSD and two thermal pads there as well. There's no paperwork, manuals, anything along that line. So let's have a look at the SSD itself. There's not a huge amount to see, no obviously artwork on there, because ideally you're going to be putting on one of the heat sinks, which is going to be covering all the chips up, the controllers and everything like that. The opposite side of the SSD is very similar, but you've got a barcode here as well as the model number and everything like that. But this would be the what you'd class normally as the top of the SSD. SSD. Okay, so you've got three options you can do with cool in this. The first option is going bareback, which basically means you do not put a heat sink on there at all because the device you're putting it in has already got a heat sink. Let's say, for example, a motherboard which has got a built in heat sink which covers the SSD bay, then you don't need to put any of those on. But if you're putting it in a device, let's say something that's a bit more slimline, like a laptop or maybe a game console, bear in mind this is PS5 compatible, you could put the slimline heatsink on. To do that, all you do is get one of these thermal pads, only use one though, peel both sides of it, stick it on the SSD or on the back of the actual heatsink, then put the heatsink on. Just bear in mind the heatsink does have its own piece of plastic on which you do need to remove first, otherwise it's not going to work properly, and then it'll look something on the lines of like that when it's inside of your case. The next option is to go for the big beefy heat sink. This is not only going to cool the top, it's going to cool the bottom as well. So to set this up, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, we'll get rid of that slim one. We'll need one thermal pad for the bottom. Typical, they're sticking together now. You obviously peel the top and bottom off, same as before. You put that into the bottom of the back plate there. Then you get your SSD, slide that in from the end. There we go, so you slide it in from the end, slide it all the way across, and then what I suggest you do is press down gently on it. That will then allow the, obviously, the pad and the back plate and the actual SSD to stick together properly. Just make sure before you do that, that the connectors are hanging over the end properly, and the screw hole there, which obviously allows you to screw it into the actual board, is not, obviously, restricted by the back plate. Now, when you've done that, you're supposed to then put the thermal pad on the back of the actual uh, heat sink. So again, remove both sides of the plastic, what's on there to protect it. And then, I'm just showing you, you would then get the SSD heat sink and then push down both ends. I'm not gonna do it because there's no pad there and it might scratch the SSD, but you push it down and it clips in and then your SSD will look something along that line. It's a bit more beefier. Now they say if you're using the slimline heat sink, you will reduce temperatures by around 15% and the big one by around about 30, 35%. Now, I'm not sure how they work that out, where the I mean percentage is what, 15% off of some, a certain number, or 15% off of Kelvin or Celsius or Fahrenheit, because obviously 15% is going to work out differently depending on what you're classing as the coldest temperature, or are you measuring from zero? Hard to say, but again, you should get decent reduction in temperature, whichever one you use, but more so if you're using the big bulky one. Okay, so we've got the SSD installed into this machine. 
Now we haven't put the heat sinks on to begin with because we're just doing some basic testing and we want to make sure that the testing uh, obviously passes while it has got no extra cooling on it like the obviously the heat sinks and then we will do some tests obviously and results with the heat sinks on so you can see the temperature differences. Now we're using PC check UEFI from Eurosoft to do the hardware check we do a first of all a quick check which is 30 minutes to see if there's any issues to begin with before we start doing the big test but we'll do a 48 hour stress test afterwards if you don't know what Eurosoft's PC check UEFI is it's basically a industrial scale program designed for computer technicians and system integrators to test computers and computer components. So all you big guys generally have this software or something like it, rather than using the unreliable free things you can get online, which are not always accurate. Okay, so down to testing. We've tested this on a Threadripper PC, which is 24 cores, 48 threads, lots of power, 64 gig of RAM, and it supports all your Gen 4 SSDs. Uh, we've done tests using Atto Crystal Disk Mark, and we've checked the temperatures using uh, HW Info. We've also used a laser temperature thermometer as well, and we've done each test three times, and we've got basically the average results here. So the read speed using Crystal Disk Mark, we got 7,338 megabytes per second, so very close to that uh, 7,400 they quoted on the box and the website, and the write speed was a little bit below what they quoted at 6,869, obviously they quoted 7,000, but again, that can differ per obviously drive your machine and so forth and it's within that margin of error in all honesty so i would say it's getting the numbers it should be getting we also checked using atto because atto gives us slightly different results and we always say take it either way because some people like to use atto some people like to use crystal disc mark most manufacturers usually state the numbers what are on crystal disc mark because it gives you better numbers but using atto we got read speeds of 7.8 Eight eight gigabytes, uh, six point nine seven actually on the read. Uh, so that's obviously six thousand nine hundred and seventy megabytes. And on the write, we got uh, six thousand. 420 megabytes so again as I said a little bit lower than crystal disk melts results but that's how it goes now we did do tests with and without the heat sink and there was some big differences we found so this test result is the temperatures with the big heat sink on the maximum temperature go up to 61 degrees average temperature 54 now without the heat sink as a non on altogether it did actually affect our test results we did find when it had been running for a while the speeds went all over the place and atto so it would go up to the roughly 6.9 gigabytes per second but when it was transferring 1 megabyte to 16 megabyte files uh, the temperature of the drive jumped up to about 74 degrees celsius which then caused the drive to read speeds to and write speeds to drop to around about three to 400 megabytes per second, which was pretty bad. But as soon as we slapped on either of the heat sinks, that issue went away. So the actual maximum temperature without any heat sink was 74 degrees. When we put on the slimline one, we got down to 69 degrees. And then when we put the big one on, uh, the maximum temperature was 61 degrees. So basically, this drive does everything it says on the tin. I would highly recommend it. And if you're looking for a drive that's got lots of possibilities with either having no heat sink, a slimline heat sink, or a big heat sink, then, well, this must be the drive you should get. I hope you enjoyed this video and know I did. Why not check out one of our other videos by clicking this box up here or this one just down here. Otherwise, you can give us a thumbs up, like, subscribe, comment below. Let us know what you think and we'll see you next time.